Hello everyone, this is Laura from Crafty Not Shifty. Thank you for joining me today. I am sharing with you my 10 cards that I've made using the Love From Lizzie June card kit. I cannot believe it is June already. It feels really strange to be saying that, but there we go. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna dive right in and show you exactly what I'm doing with each of these cards and I hope you'll stick around and watch all 10. So first off I've got this rainbow piece of paper, this was one of the 12 by 12 sheets and I've just cut that down so it'll fit nicely on the front of my note card and I positioned two of those um, chipboard pieces exactly where I was going to want them on the front of the card just so I could add some white kind of a highlight behind them just so there was a little bit of a background to them um, compared to that rainbow piece. I've then got this stamp here, this is a wood mounted stamp, and I'm just going to use the first two words, so craft, uh, crafty friends. The full sentiment is crafty friends are the best of friends, but I just wanted to use the top part of this, so I'm using some post-it tape just to go ahead and mask this off. If you don't have uh, post-it tape, you could just be really careful when you're inking up the stamp, or you could just use some printer paper kind of held over place. Do make sure you peel away that masking paper, it's going to be covered in ink so make sure you peel that away before you stamp this down. I've definitely made that mistake a few times. And the type of ink that I'm using is just a Versamark sticky ink and it's really good for holding on to your embossing powder to allow you some time to heat set that in the exact pattern that you want. You will have seen just before I did that, I went ahead and used an anti-static powder tool just to make sure that that powder stuck only where I wanted it to. And then I'm using my heat gun to set this. So I wanted again the sentiment just to have that little bit of background piece to help it pop off the back of the card. So I just used that same white pigment ink and um, a little tiny finger dauber and put that all over that sentiment. And then I just ran some of my, I believe it was Warm Lipstick Distress Ink. And then I'm just gonna use my ATG tape to apply some adhesive on the back of this piece. I've gone ahead and pre-cut a piece of the silver mirror board and I'm just going to lay this on top to give me a nice silver border around this piece. Once I'm happy with how that's lined up and pressed into place, I'm just going to use a clean towel to buff away any of the excess ink that's sitting on top of the embossing powder. And you can really see the difference here with how much the sentiment kind of pops now it's got that white background. I'm again just applying a little bit more tape. I say a little bit, I tend to use an awful lot of tape on my cards. You probably could get away with a little bit less, but I want these to be really sturdy and I want them to hold up. So I've applied that to an A2 size note card. All of the cards that I'm making today are A2 in size, and I made all of my card bases by taking the cardstock that was included in the kit and cutting it down the center and folding it in half. So here I'm just laying these two crafty friends um, on top of the card to see if I've got enough of that white pigment ink in the background. And you can see I'm just kind of laying them down, um, figuring out if I need a little bit more ink, and then going in with that sponge dauber and just using what's left on the top of that. Pigment ink will stay wet for a really long time, so um, you get quite a lot of kind of working time with just one application onto that dauber. I could have stopped right here but I decided to add a little bit more sparkle and to do that I just used one of the gems from the kit. These are little heart shaped gems. They're almost like um, like diamondy type gems. They've got these little tiny little um, kind of sparkly bits in them. They're really pretty. And then I also wanted to add some of the um, Nouveau Drops. This particular Nouveau Drops is the liquid mercury... liquid? mercury crystal drops and I just added that onto the flower in one of the girl's hairs and then over the top of the earrings just to give them a bit of dimension and a little bit of shine. I think it pulls in the silver cardstock from the background quite nicely and also ties in with the shine of the heart. Okay so moving on to card number two. For this one I'm going to use the building stamp set. This is a really great stamp set. If you haven't seen my unboxing um, this is an incredible stamp set. It's got this kind of um, torso and face and then it has all these different options for hairstyles and eyelashes and lips and earrings and all different things and because it is such a simple drawing you could also go ahead and draw any design that you wanted. So if you wanted to add kind of really big bouncy wavy hair you could definitely do that. If you wanted poker straight hair you could add that too. Um, it's, it's a really nice simple line drawing which makes it great for adding your own things on or just building it up here. So I stamped that twice and the reason being is that I didn't perfectly align my first stamping and I just went ahead and added some eyelashes there and also one of the necklaces. 
So I coloured this in and cut it out and I'm just adding a little bit of white gel pen to add a bit of a highlight to her eyes and I just think it's so cute, I'm really pleased with this. You will see me use the stamp set again later on in the video and I'll create a completely different look. So here I'm just playing around with the blue card base and some of the blue patterned paper and I'm just trying to figure out exactly what I want to use and just figuring out if I like how this looks together and then I'm going to go ahead and take two of my rectangle dies and just lay those together with some post-it tape, run it through my die cut machine and I get this beautiful gingham blue frame. And I'm going to use that, um, you could definitely use it to create a shaker card and one of the cards that I have later on is similar to that. But for this one I just wanted to create a um, kind of like a little, a little bit of dimension and a bit of a window on the front of my card. You'll notice that the colour blue of the girl's top has changed slightly and that's just because I went over it with one of my markers. I decided I wanted to change the shade just a little bit. So here I have the stencil that's included in the kit. This is a really great stencil for building plaid backgrounds. And I've just inlaid two of the pieces, excuse my head getting in the way there, I've just inlaid two of the pieces to, um, to help me with that masking so I didn't have to use so much masking tape. And I think that's a really great tip for if you have the stencil. Um, it's wonderful that you get the insides included as well. So you can use those in place of masking paper in certain areas. So I'm just using some more of that white pigment ink and I went in one direction with my blue stripes and that was using a Simon Says Stamp ink and then I went back over it with the white. And then I've got a slightly darker ink here and again I'm just using the same stencil but this time with the stitch line. I just think it's great, I'm really pleased with how this turned out and I've seen some great um, kind of examples of how to use this from the design team so definitely check those out. So I added some foam tape on the back of my frame just to give it a little bit of dimension so it could pop off the base of the card. And then I stuck that down and I'm adding some adhesive onto the back of my little crafty girl and just tucking her inside. It kind of cuts off the heart shape of her necklace but I just wanted her to kind of nest just inside that frame. Once I was happy with that, I've got a couple of the flower pieces and these again were included in the kit. The only add-on that I purchased this month, I believe, was the, um, the washi tape and you will see me use that in one of the other cards but everything else came from the kit with the exception of any of the inks that I'm using and just a couple of my tools. So here I have the Crafty Girl stamp and I'm going to use some black pigment ink. This is one of my favourite inks for... Um, for stamping sentiments and I'll just go ahead and stamp that down it says crafty girl with an exclamation point and then I'm bringing in the sequin mix for the kit and I'm just using my jewel picker to lift up each of these sequins and press them down into a dot of the uh, multimedia mat <laughs> I completely forgot what it was called there I must have said that about a thousand times I use it in almost all of my videos and it completely escaped me but that is multimedia multimedia oh gosh Multimedium in the matte finish by Ranger and I'll try to have these products linked in the description below if you're interested. So once I worked my way around adding in those sequins I made sure I had enough in there so I was happy with the amount of shine and interest that I had in the background and then that's card two finished. So for card three I wanted to do some more die cutting and I've used one of those cut apart pieces with a circle die and then a slightly larger circle die to cut the mirror board and then I'm going to lay those one on top of the other. So I really love this piece, it says crafty and happy which is what I am most days I would say. Um, most of my days are spent doing something crafty and that in turn makes me very very happy. So I've got here a piece of the blue pearlized cardstock, the shine on this is really lovely and it complements the colours in this kit really well. And I'm laying that onto a grey note card and I just think the pearlized blue and the grey together look really lovely. Now you'll see that I've just peeled that back up. That is um, another, another of my many experiences of sticking something down before really thinking about whether or not I wanted to tuck something behind the piece that I'm using. And I did, I wanted to tuck this ribbon behind it. I don't always plan out my cards, particularly for 10 card one kit videos. I just start working with the kit and see where where it leads me and um, I see where I get to. So there is quite a few instances where I find myself thinking it would have been better to stick something down first before adding something on top. But most of the time you can do a little bit of card surgery and pick your pieces back apart and then reassemble it like I just did with this piece here. So I just used my tape to stick this um, piece on top and then I'm gonna add another one of the chipboard girls. 
This one has a really cute bandana in her hair that matches the patterned paper and I just think it's really lovely. So I stuck her down on a slight angle and then I went ahead and cut a whole bunch of the button shapes from some more of that mirror card. I felt like the crafty and happy kind of um, focal piece that I'd created kind of reminded me of a button with its circular shape, I guess. So I wanted to use some of those button dies um, that, that came in this kit to add some more kind of shine and interest on the background of this piece. So you can see again, I'm just using my glue to stick those down in place. And then at the moment, my um, logo, my logo, my focal point, my crafty and happy piece is hanging off the edge of the card. So I will go ahead and trim that off once everything's stuck down. So I place everything exactly where I want it, just so I can get a feel for the layout that I'm going for and where I want each of these little buttons to be. And then again, I'm just using my jewel picker and my multimedia mat. There we go, it wasn't such a struggle that time I got it out. My multimedia mat to stick those in place. And the reason that I really love that glue for sticking down small elements like this, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a really strong adhesive. And second, um, second of all, any of the glue that kind of smushes out the sides of the piece that you're sticking down, because it has a matte finish, it doesn't leave that glossy shine, so it really doesn't highlight any mistakes that you make. Okay, so on to card number four. I really like this one. It's a super quick and easy card. It came together really quickly, but I think it's really effective also. So again, I took one of my stitched rectangle dies and I cut a rectangle out in the center that has that uh, craftiness is happiness sentiment. And then I'm just trimming up the um, cut apart piece. It's slightly bigger than an A2 size note card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I just trimmed that down so it would fit nicely on the piece. And then I'm just gonna stick that down onto a blue card base. You'll notice that I've trimmed this down to fit perfectly widthwise, edge to edge to edge, and then the top and the bottom has a small blue strip of the card base showing. And I'm also going to add some peel-offs a little bit later on. So I found some craft foam in my stash that was blue. I felt that that was the best color to use here with my blue card base. And I actually cut this using the same stitched rectangle, so it would be the exact same piece as my aperture that I've cut in the center. And I've just used some double-sided sticky tape to stick that down. I'll peel off the release tape and then stick my sentiment back on top. This is one of my favourite double-sided sticky tapes to use. Again, it's really, really strong and the um, it tears really easily and the backing comes away really easily as well. So there we have the craftiness is happiness. And I just wanted to add a little bit extra to this. You could leave it like this, but I thought as I've got my peel offs, I wanted to bring in some of that purple color, the kind of lilac-y purple. So I used that along the bottom edge and then again along the top, just trimming off any of the excess of those peel offs. And you know me, I have to have to keep all of those little pieces. <laughs> um, they come in useful eventually. So I trimmed away the extra pieces and just stuck those back on the backing sheet and then ran around the uh, craftiness is happiness sentiment as well. Just adding those same peel offs in the same width. They do come in a couple of different widths on the sheet, but I decided just to use the same widths here. So we have some time while I finish this up and I will use that to tell you about the Love From Lizzie challenge this month. If you haven't already seen it, it's on the Love From Lizzie blog. You can access it via the Love From Lizzie shop and I'll try and remember to put a link in the description as well to the challenge. All you need to do to enter is create a card that features stripes. So the challenge is show us your stripes and you just need to upload an image to the challenge to be in chance of winning a £20 gift certificate to Love From Lizzie. So now we've finished adding those pieces, I'll just trim off the excess with my uh, craft blade. And then I decided to add even more dimension to this, so I brought in yet more of those um, chipboard pieces. Really, really loved the chipboard pieces this month, and um, it was nice to see those included in the kit rather than an add-on. I think that was really great. I'm a really big fan of the chipboard pieces. They just add something you know, really special to your card. Not only do you get the image, but you also get the dimension. So I went ahead and added a bunch of them on here. And as you can see, they're all kind of crafty icons. So we've got the glue stick up at the top. And then the piece that I'm struggling with here to get the backing off. I have hardly any nails at the moment. Um, I've been having some problems with my nails. They've, they've disappeared completely. And what's left is very, very flaky and thin. So it's not very nice. Um, and it's quite difficult to get the backing off these pieces. But I got there in the end. 
So I added the paint at the bottom and then we've got a thimble and then to tie in with the thimble I added this little pin here and then I felt like it was slightly, I don't know, slightly, slightly asymmetrical without having something over on that left hand side so I added a little button piece there. Okay, so moving on to card number five, we are halfway through my 10 cards and I just had to use this Maker's Gonna Make piece. It's a beautiful bright pink piece and I think the sentiment is really great as well. So I definitely knew I wanted to use this on a card when I saw this in the kit. And I've just trimmed it down to be slightly smaller than the cut apart piece and then also rounded the edges just to add a little bit of interest and something a little bit different to the other cards just by adding the rounded edges using my corner chomper. So I've got another piece of the gingham paper. There was beautiful lawn form gingham paper in this card kit. And um, if you haven't already seen it, I do have a full unboxing of this and some of the other stuff that I bought as part of my um, Love From Lizzie haul this month. I definitely took advantage of the free um, add-on subscriber shipping and filled my box up <laughs> to make sure I could get as much as possible sent to me with just one postage charge. So I've got this yellow paper and I've cut that down to size, added some adhesive on the back and for once I remembered, thank goodness, to attach the ribbon before I stuck this down to the card base and again just used a pink card base that matches perfectly with that Maker's Gonna Make sentiment. So we had this little um, kind of paint pan, like a little travel watercolour set and a paintbrush in the chipboard stickers. So I definitely wanted to use those, they're so sweet. So I added those along the bottom and then the scissors just up at the top. So I wanted a little bit of shine on this card. It's beautiful and bright, but there wasn't any sparkle or shine. So I used my Wink of Stella pen to go over each of those letters. I'm going to class that as brush lettering practice, um, it was kind of guilt free practice because like, you can't really go wrong with adding a bit of shine, even if you get it in completely the wrong place that's fine because it's shiny and um, I got to practice making those shapes. <laughs> so I also added some glitter to these little, I don't, I don't know what those are called, but the, the lines <laughs> that are around the word gonna. And then I wanted to add something else so I brought in another one of those little hearts and then I had some sparkly Nouveau in my stash. This was one. This is um, one of the glitter drops range, and it was the silver moon dust. Oh, I'm sorry, I've skipped a step here. So <laughs> I'm actually adding the I craft so hard I sweat glitter sticker, and um, that just came from the kind of sentiment sticker sheet that I received. And then I'm adding the Nouveau on top, and I added that to the end of the paintbrush and then to each of those little colour pans. And you'll see in the, um, in the image, the close-up, when I hold it up to the camera, you can still see the colours through that Nouveau, and um, even more so when it's dried. So that sticker that I used, and I do go and use the, the icon sticker sheet that I have as well, your kit might be slightly different to mine. There was a um, kind of a range of different stickers that you would receive two sheets, one that was more sentiment based and one that was more icon based. So your stickers might be slightly different to mine. I'm just using a pen here. I forget the name of this pen, but this is a jelly roll pen that has clear glitter. And I just added that to add a little bit further sparkle and accent onto that. Okay, so card six, I'm applying adhesive all over the back of one of my yellow card bases. And you can see I just came to the end of my tape gun as I was doing that. So I just picked off that little piece where the gun ran out and then came back in with some additional tape. So again, I'm using that yellow gingham piece and just laying that down over the card base. And I've got one of the cut aparts here and this one says create. Now, I actually decided that I was going to make this piece a little bit bigger than just the square that it was, and I cut a piece out of the centre, and I'm going to stick that down flat to the card with a gap in the middle, and then I'll hide that gap with one of the chipboard pieces, as you'll see in just a minute. So this is the piece, and it says, make pretty things, and it's like a cute little banner with a push pin pushed into the side. And then again on this card, I just went to town with the chipboard pieces. I actually think I still have a few of them left. I didn't even manage to use them all when I was making these cards. And you can see I used an awful lot of them. So you do get a lot of them in the kit. And I'm adding a, um, a little spool of thread, an embroidery hoop, this little um, bag that says so crafty, and then a pin and just another one of those sparkly hearts. So again, a really quick and easy card, but so effective with the dimension of those stickers. 
Okay, so now card number seven. This is where, again, I'm going to use my um, building stamp set to make another crafty girl. So I was really tempted, I was really tempted to try and use some of my succulents and some masking to actually create almost like a head planter. I don't know if you've seen those, but you can get like little planters that are like a head or a face and then you stick a plant inside and obviously as it grows it looks like crazy hair. Um, but I didn't get around to trying that so maybe I'll do that in another, another one of my videos. But I just built up my girl using the frilly kind of neck piece, the straight hair and some earrings. And then I coloured her in and cut her out. So I've got a heart die here that I wanted to use on the keep calm and make pretty things cut apart. But it was a little bit too, lar uh, too large. So instead I took a pencil and traced around the inside of the die and then just used my scissors to cut along that and that's a really great trick for if you have a die that's almost the right size but not quite you can always take advantage by drawing around the inside or the outside edge of the metal piece. So then I've got these crafty words cut apart and I'm covering the whole background with that. I was a little bit um a little bit eager with the glue there, so a bit kind of smushed out the side, but that's fine, it won't affect the card at all. And then I covered the back of this heart with some foam uh, foam squares. And these are the scrapbook adhesive foam squares, which I can't tell you enough about how much I love those. I'm in no way connected to the manufacturer or anything like that. I just really love the, the um, scrapbook adhesive foam squares. If you haven't given them a try and you're a subscriber to the Love From Lizzie kits, just go ahead and pop them in your box. Um, they're definitely worth a try. I think you'll fall in love just like I have. <laughs> So I've added my crafty girl and then I'm adding a couple of the stickers. This little one here says be creative and I'm actually going to use that in a minute to set one of the chipboard pieces on top. I wanted to add the blue pencil and I kind of use that to follow the edge of the heart. That is my other sticker sheet that I was just looking at there. I was trying to see if there was anything I wanted to use from that one in this card and I decided to use this blue pencil from the chipboard piece. So I was laying that down, seeing how it looks, deciding that I like it, fighting with the release tape with my lack of nails. I mean, I don't know why I don't ever think to pick up my um, craft knife because that would definitely be easier to just slide that under there. And I, maybe I should try and remember that in the future. <laughs> and then I have this gorgeous little cup that I've set on the Be Creative sentiment. Okay, so on to the next card. We are on card number eight. And for this one, I'm using one of the sentiments. This is one of the largest sentiments and it says, happiness looks gorgeous on you. And it has these two little cute hearts either side of the word looks. And I'm just using the Simon Says Stamp Spring Rain um, ink for that. And you can see I'm in my dressing gown while I'm making this card. <laughs> I can't remember if it was early morning or if I just got out of the shower, um, but yeah, I'm in my dressing gown. So um, excuse that. <laughs> And then here I'm using the washi tape. I got this as an add-on. If you didn't get this, you can always go ahead and cut a strip of craft paper. A uh, craft paper? No, patterned paper to go along this piece. But I decided to use the washi tape. I tried to kind of line up the pattern and um, I realised you didn't really need to. <laughs> the, the way that it's designed, it looks fine with those pieces. Just lay one on top of the other. And you actually can't really see that much of it by the time I add all of these chipboard pieces. So for this one, I wanted almost a, um, like a journaling or a project life kind of feel. And so I added the camera, also the little like planner or project life um, album, the pen, a pencil, and then a couple of stickers. So I lay them down where I thought I wanted them and then stuck each of those down. I found that you do get a little bit of, um, kind of wiggle room with this and you'll see this is one of the examples where I've stuck something down without um, finishing the background piece. So I went ahead and added all of these down. I added a couple of foam squares on the back of the camera because I knew I wanted to lay it on top of my little album. So to compensate for the height difference I added some foam squares and stuck that down and I then decided that I wanted to add some of those lilac peel-offs. So because I'd already stuck everything down, it was um, a little bit difficult getting those tiny pieces in between each of my icons. But don't worry, I edited the majority of that out, so you won't have to suffer through it. <laughs> I trimmed off the excess of the washi tape and then stuck down the scrap 
sentiment and also a paper clip just next to that pencil. I felt like there was a little bit too much of a gap towards the edge there. And then I also added the pink scissors. So I was looking at the card after I'd finished adding these scissors. I spent a little while deciding exactly which way I wanted to lay them down. And then I decided we needed just something a little bit extra to finish this off. And anytime I'm in need of a finishing piece, um, the peel-offs are definitely a go-to, not just when I'm working with these kits, but when I'm working on any card, they'll feature on quite a few of my cards, just to, um, just to finish up the edges where you've got two pieces of paper, or in this case, the card base and the washi joining. I just think it's really nice to have that piece there as like a, a transition. So the piece along the bottom wasn't too difficult to add, but as I'd already stuck everything down, it was, um, yeah, I worked my way through and I got all those pieces in, but I edited that out so you didn't have to sit through that. And that is this card finished. On to card nine. Here I'm using a piece of patterned paper that matches the washi tape actually, and this is the back of one of the 12 by 12 pieces, and it matches this cut apart piece here. And I'm again just going to use a stitched rectangle and just cut out the sentiment piece here, very similar to what I did with one of my cards earlier on. So I'm cutting out the piece in the center there, but then rather than using the leftover frame, I'm actually gonna go ahead and stick down this piece in the background here. And as you can see, it's the back of one of the cut parts and it just matches the washi tape perfectly. I think it's a really nice pattern and it works really well on this gray card base. Once I've got that stuck down, I brought in some more foam from my stash, applied some double-sided sticky tape, peeled off the backing and just lay that down, making sure to line it up perfectly, and then peel the backing off the back and lay that into the centre of the card. So again, another card that's really easy to bring it together. I mean, you don't even have to go ahead and add all the different dimension. You could just cut and stick and be done, but I think it's nice to have that extra, extra something on the card. So for this one, I wanted to add some sparkle as well. And I had this product here, this spray and sparkle, and I hadn't used it yet. I got it from Lizzie's shop quite a while ago. I believe it's by Crafters Companion. And I just used a box to catch any of the mess and then sprayed that quite liberally um, over the top of the card. I would recommend if you were going to do this to take the whole thing outside before you spray it, but I wanted to keep it in the video so you could see what I was doing. Okay, so final card time. I'm again going back to the rainbow striped pieces and I'm creating a small frame using two of my stitched rectangle dies. And then I'm actually gonna use this Eat Sleep Craft Repeat Cut Apart. And um, that's also got a rainbow pattern on it, but you can see that the colors are slightly different because um, the piece that I've made the frame out of has a much bigger scale to it. So it doesn't go right the way through the pattern. But I felt that that was going to work quite nicely just to bring in all of those different colours. So I'm trimming this down because I want it to fit inside my frame piece. And you'll see later on I actually trim it down significantly. So I actually make quite a narrow rectangle out of this piece. But for now I'm going to go ahead and build my shaker element. So whenever you make a shaker card, you'll want to have a well to place your sequins in and you'll want to have a window so you can see the shaker um, and all of the pieces don't come flying out. <laughs> so the best way to do this is to use some acetate. And if you don't have acetate, you can just use the plastic packaging from um, from your, your stamp set or whatever it is that you have laying around and cut that down to size and then stretch it across a window. Again, I'm just using some of that same double-sided sticky tape, but this time in a narrower width, just to make it a little bit easier to work with around that frame. I actually went ahead and used my large rectangle to cut this piece of acetate, and that way I could be certain they'd be the exact same size. I'll press that all down firmly because I don't want any of my sequins escaping. I have made that mistake before when I was new to making shaker cards and I was creating them for the first time. I would have gaps in my foam, everything would come flying out the side. So I've definitely learned with experience for that one. To complement all of the rainbow colors, I decided to use this nice bright white, um, bright white, bright yellow background. I'm laying in the piece that I cut out of my frame here. I'm applying some glue onto the back of it and then I'm just gonna lay that inside my acetate window. And this is a really good way to help me line it up with exactly where I'll want the frame to be on the finished card. And I'll just press that down. Now, because the glue is only on that small rectangle piece, that's all that's gonna stick. 
So I'll make sure I've pressed that down firmly. And then this is where I decided to cut apart the, um, cut apart, <laughs> to narrow it down to make a smaller sentiment piece. So you can see there we've got the eat, sleep, craft, repeat. And then you can see the rainbow uh, background also. I again decided to use some peel offs because the frame, um, because the window of the frame was cut from the exact same piece that I'm using in the background, I just wanted to add a little bit of purple around the edges. So when you look through the side of this piece, rather than seeing straight through to the yellow card base, you'll actually still be able to see this purple color. So I just worked my way around with those pieces, trimming them off as I get to each of the ends. So I wanted to add a whole bunch of crafty icons to this piece, so I brought in these stickers. I didn't want to add any extra dimension because I needed my frame to be able to sit on top and for there to be enough room for the sequins to move around. So I lay that frame down just so I could see exactly where I wanted to place each of the stickers. And then I added a whole bunch of them, so we've got this little pink paint tube, then we've got the paintbrush, and um, these are again just really really sweet. So I added the button down at the bottom here and then another button next to the word craft. And I'm actually gonna use a mix of the stickers laying on the background of this piece and also on the frame. So here I've got my sticks to um, foam strips. These are really great for making shaker cards. They're really nice and thick and because they're already cut into strips, you don't have to worry about trying to trim down any foam tape that you have. They're already really nicely sized for shaker cards and you can just lay those down and trim off the excess. Again, just make sure that you have your foam tape really nicely snug edge to edge, especially if you're using glitter, because otherwise it will fly out the sides when you shake this card and you're going to want to shake it. Um, you're definitely gonna make one of these and want to play with it for quite a while. I think the first shaker card that I ever made successfully, I think I actually still have it. I think I couldn't bear to part with it. So I'm just nesting in all of those foam strips and then I'll peel off the backing First I'll add my sequins, that would have been a disaster. <laughs> First I'll add my sequins, then I'll peel off the backing and stick that frame down. I decided to match up the rainbow pieces rather than flip it around and have the colours be different. I wanted the very background and the foreground to be the same. So that you can see me playing with the shaker. It is necessary if you make a shaker card, you have to play with it for about five minutes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick on some more of those crafty icons. We've got the little ink pad, again, the paint palette, and also a um, stamp. And that actually looks really similar to a stamp that I have with my Crafty Not Shifty logo that I stamp on the back of cards when I remember. I also wanted to add something just along the bottom here. And I was trying to decide if I was going to use the, um, the ribbon piece which is kind of like a tape measure, or if I wanted to use the yellow tape measure. And I felt like the yellow worked really nicely with that yellow card base. So I stuck that down, and then because there's so many sequins in this card, you kind of couldn't see the button or the paint tube that were in the bottom corners. So I decided to add just this little flower, just so there was something in that bottom corner. Okay, so that is all 10 of the cards finished. I'm just gonna give you a really quick run through of each of those so you can see what they're like. I really love how the um, the mirror card catches the light in that very first one with the crafty friends. And then the DIY kind of plaid background making use of the stencil with the crafty girl. The maker's gonna make, I think looks wonderful with the, um, the glitter added on top of the paints. I think those paints and the paintbrush are just so cute. And then I've got crafty and happy and then craftiness is happiness. There is definitely a lot of happy and a lot of crafty in this kit. Anyone who's buying this kit or watching this video is definitely a crafty person or you've ended up here by mistake. Um, so I think it's a really great kit for crafters to send cards to other crafters. And on that note, if you ever do want to receive a card from me, just make sure to leave a comment on my videos or to comment on my blog. You can always send me an email. When I get round to it, I definitely do enjoy sending cards out to people. I am a bit of a nightmare with remembering to get to the post office, but I would love to send these out to crafty friends. So then we've got the final one there with the eat, sleep, craft, repeat. And then you'll just see me rearranging those, trying to figure out exactly how it looks best on the screen. I often think it's quite difficult to fit all 10 of the cards on the screen and have everything look great. So that is everything for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. On screen right now, you'll be able to see a couple more videos that I think you might enjoy. You can also see a logo. If you go ahead and click on that logo, you'll subscribe to this channel. 
and I hope to see you back again soon. That's all from me. Bye for now.